Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Coleman and I are speaking with the irrepressible, irascible, whatever a, a wonderful uh, uh, descriptions I can give of him, and the, these are probably not them, Manny Pacheco. I feel like I, I, I feel like uh, one uh, little Ricky. Was it the irrepressible little Ricky? Yeah, him. Yeah. him too. That's what I meant. Irrepressible Rick, Rick, little Rick, Manny Rick Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> Anything with an ear in front of it. Right. That's that's you, man. Yeah. Hey, you. Manny. Uh, not too long ago, we were all talking about character actors, mm. and um, I I've been thinking about you know the great female character actors, and I don't think. I don't, there really, there are no actors uh, uh, today. The female character actors are, are, are basically good looking actors who are the girlfriend. That's, that's the current female character, the, the girlfriend, you know, it's a sidekick kind of role. But yeah. back in the day, there were, there were wonderful female character actors who, who were obviously visually different. I'm thinking of Margaret Dumont in uh, uh, the Marx Brothers films. You know, she was a large woman. She was haughty, and she, uh, granted, she played the same type of woman. All the She's time. very matronly. Yeah. Very ma you're 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 talking about the matronly roles that that don't exist. Although I would argue that if anytime you see Kathy Bates in a movie these days, she falls into that category, and she's quite good. So well, I mean, yes, they do but exist. There's just but, not as many. Yeah, I think Kathy Bates is a, is a, has been given much more leeway to do characters, different kinds of characters, mm -hmm. despite her girth, uh, than let's say uh, Margaret Dumont was. Margaret Dumont. But my point is this, and that is, there were wonderful, wonderful character actors. Forget whether they were typecast or not; they were just wonderful women. You don't see women character actors anymore. And there were many, I mean, there were very, very honored character actors. I mean, there were the A-list actors and actresses, but there were the A-list character actors and actresses as well. You and I think, I think that at the top of the list, you'd have to probably put Jane Darwell at 20th Century Fox, Ma Joad. She was, yes. um, she was used not only uh, for her visual characterizations of playing great mothers and even villains, as she was in the Oxbow incident, but she lent her voice to the war effort uh, and, and was in many of these John Ford war pictures, playing the vocal mothers of those back home, waiting word whether or not their, their sons were going to come back from their yeah. campaign in Europe or, or, or the uh, South Pacific. Yeah. Mm. And, and they were great actresses. I mean, they were... They were given limited roles because they had to be a character, you know, and many of them were typecast, I think. Um, but they still uh, shine. Yeah. I mean, I mean, sometimes you return to a, a motion picture because you want to see these great performances by the character roles. I mean, uh, who doesn't want to go back and see Margaret Dumont in a Marx Brothers bit? I mean, just she's just fabulous. Yeah. And uh, there was also Marjorie Maine, who actually would eventually end up appearing in the titles above the picture uh, the picture title itself correct so, I mean, playing playing uh, uh, ma kettle i mean yeah. she was the star she was the star even though she started as ma kettle in a supporting role in the egg and i with claudette colbert and uh, fred mcmurray she eventually had a whole series of films with percy kilbride in the ma and pa kettle films and uh, she was a star but you know she really cut her teeth in the 30s and 40s you know playing opposite uh, rugged folks like wallace berry yeah. So she, you know, she would play these real tough, tough roles. And uh, Marjorie Maine was, I, I think where she really got noticed was in the 1937 production of, of Dead End, where she plays the unforgiving mother of Humphrey Bogart. And I believe she did it on stage, but she definitely did it in the movies. It made the Dead End kids uh, stars. And it was uh, it called attention to Humphrey Bogart's great work, Sylvia Sidney as well, and Joel McRae. But I think Marjorie Maine in many ways steals that picture. And um, I think from that point on, she would end up um, getting more prominent roles. I have a question yeah. for you, Matt. Um, to the best of your knowledge, has any uh, of these so-called character actors in a character actor role 
ever been nominated for Best Supporting Actress? Oh, all of them. Uh, Jane Darwell. Oh, really? Uh, Jane Darwell. Yeah, Jane Darwell won for uh, The Grapes of Wrath. Yeah. Uh, Marjorie Maine was nominated for an Oscar. I don't think she won one. Uh, Thelma Ritter, which by mm. any estimation of anybody who is a lover of classic films, uh, was nominated for six Academy Awards in a 12-year period. Oh, wow. Probably one of the great uh, uh, time periods of somebody being recognized. Yeah. Marlon Brando, by the, in the same era, at the same time, Marlon Brando was nominated five times. So if that gives you any indication of the, the great Thelma Ritter and her roles, which included playing the, uh, the, the friend and, and housekeeper of uh, Betty Davis in All About Eve. Yeah. She plays the young uh, mother with her kid, taking them to visit Santa Claus and Miracle on 34th Street. And most famously, that scene where she drinks Jane, uh, she drinks uh, Rock Hudson under the table in Pillow Talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she was terrific in The Misfits as a friend of Marilyn Monroe. Yes. And, and she, you know, Thelma Ritter had, had a wonderfully long career. I remember some of the older films where she was pretty young and played a character. And then as she got older, she could play the grandma, the mother or the grandmother, uh, irascible grandmother. Character. Or the pal, you know, I mean, she was a pal of Debbie Reynolds as they crossed the, as they crossed the United States and how the West was won. She was the, um, she was the unsinkable Molly Brown in Titanic, the yeah. Clifton Webb, Barbara Stanwyck film. Yeah. So yes, there, uh, Thelma Ritter arguably might be the best of this bunch. And I think when polls are taken on Facebook among classic film sites, she always ends up number one. Number one male would always be Claude Rains, mm -hmm. and number one female always seems to be Thelma Ritter. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, That's so do you miss, do you miss, uh, as I do, some of these great female character actors? Uh, well, I think they exist. I, I think, like, I, I gave the Kathy Bates, but there are others. I mean, even though it was a starring role. I mean, what a great character Jessica Tandy would play in Cocoon or in Driving Miss Daisy. Yeah. I think I think that she would fall under I mean, she had a career as a character actress during the, the Golden Age, along with her husband Hume Cronin. Right. But I think later, even though she was honored with an Oscar for best actress, she was truly a remarkable character actor who really went well into the 1990s. And, and you know, one other thing you mentioned, uh, John, I want to get back to that, you know, today's actors end up being the best friend. We had a slew of those, too. I mean, Eve Arden, there was nobody better than the best friend Eve Arden played in films. And arguably, even though she was a, a, an iconic star on television, Lucille Ball would play that part that Eve Arden made famous. I mean, she would play the best buddy of, of Catherine Hepburn in Without Love. I yeah. mean, she could play that, that, that wise cracking buddy uh, that was later very popular in the 21st century in films. So, I mean, you had, those, you had those supporting players, those character actors who were also the kind of the best pal. And that, that, that kind of worked. I mean, I think that worked in, in, in the 30s and 40s as well. Yeah. Interesting, interesting perspective. Um, I, I wonder if, uh, because some of those character actors would go on to be stars, like Lucille Ball. Mm -hmm. Right. But um, I wonder if that's true today, if those women that are the second banana, if you will, do they ever go on to become lead actresses? Well, how about Gina Davis in a bit role on Tootsie? And she she did a series of bit roles. I mean, Gina Davis was was basically you know a walk on or a character actress, mm -hmm. and she later started starring in a bunch of films, a, a League of Their Own, and 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 Thelma and Louise. Good point. So I think Gina Davis is really a great example of somebody who parlayed her her um, not her. Her, her looks and her talent into from from character roles to starring roles. I think Madeline Kahn is another great example of someone who uh, made the jump, not as not as pro prolific a jump as Lucille Ball or Eve Arden, but made the prolific jump of being a character actress and and amazingly funny. Yeah, uh, uh, on film with Paper Moon and What's Up Doc and Blaze yeah. Saddles and Young Frankenstein yes. to television. And, you know, I think I think Madeline Kahn would have had a great career on television had she not passed so young. 
So, yeah, there are those individuals who appear as character roles and then later become stars. I mean, a bona fide star. But it seems to me that most of the female actors who uh, today uh, are in films are more in cameo roles. Like Rita, uh, well, it wasn't really, she had a more than uh, just cameo, like Rita Moreno in the New West Side Story. Uh, but they right. they bring they bring back a famous uh, uh, star uh, at, uh, to provide this kind of right. background that we used to get with uh, character actresses, which we just don't we just don't see them anymore. Well, on a regular basis, as John pointed out. Yeah, I think you make a good point. There are a series of A list stars who are now uh, appearing in smaller roles: Judy Dench, mm-hmm. yeah. Helen Mirren. Maggie Smith um, are really good examples of of folks that will appear in smaller roles. I think that's starting to happen now with Meryl Streep. She'll make an appearance Mm -hmm. as she did in Don't Look Up. She wasn't the star. Clearly a character role is playing the the, the funny president of the United States. Um, But there are some actors that won't give it up just yet. I don't think Glenn Close is willing to play necessarily a character role uh, I think she likes to to be the star in films. Yeah. Although clearly she would be wonderful in character parts. I think. Mm. Um, so as as actors or actresses get older, they will revert to smaller roles because they just love the work, and there is nothing wrong with that. I think that that's that's terrific. So we oh, you know yeah. Judy Judy Dench received an Oscar nomination for her role this year in Belfast. And it was clearly a supporting role. Yeah. And she did a wonderful job in the film. So, yeah, yeah I mean, you know, I, I, I think that the, there's, there's a room for character. I mean, look, not everybody can be a star in the film. We know that. But those juicy, smaller roles that define the essence of a picture, we walk away from it many times. Many times we say, "Okay, we love the love story at the top." Yeah, we and we remember that. So funny. We remember that line, like, "I'll have what she's having." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the line you remember out of the whole movie, as opposed to. I, I know the whole movie starred, well, you know, uh, Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan, but you you remember, you know. And of course, you know, you, you remember the, the wonderful roles that Lainey Kazan carved out in the 70s and 80s and her as, as a character actor. She was just magnificent. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think I think any generation is going to have that that character actor that uh, that we remember in iconic films. But uh, I, I think to John's point, you know, they just don't seem to have a certain look anymore. Mm-hmm. They seem to have a star look when clearly they're the supporting part. Well, this has been another fascinating conversation about a uh, very f- often forgotten part of Hollywood, uh, and not so yes, not so uh, not so ancient. And 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 truth be told, thank you for allowing me to talk about the great character actors. I think one of the biggest complaints I get from my readers is I need to talk more about the great actresses of Hollywood's golden age. So mm-hmm. allowing me this opportunity yeah. is a gift, and I thank you for that. Well, I, you know, Manny, the, just to put a finishing uh, period on this, uh, I think the characters, this is me talking, I think the character actors are often more memorable as as characters mm. than the leading characters. And, uh, and just, we love them. We fall in love with them. Granted, we see them, sometimes see them doing the same character over and over in different movies. But you know what? We still love them. So. Sure. Who doesn't love Hattie McDaniel and Gone with the Wind or Margaret Hamilton in The Wizard yeah. of Oz? I mean, yeah. yes, we love them. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for this uh, walk down uh, memory lane. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks, Manny. Always a pleasure. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.